Hello, my name is Joel Stoner uh, from Alter Media, and we are the developer of Studio Suite XI, the studio management software. Now, you might be wondering what that is, uh, and so we've got a little diagram here. Uh, studio Suite XI includes kind of this whole workflow, uh, starting with contacts over on the left side. Uh, you need a way to keep track of all of your clients and prospects, staff, emails, uh, communications, and so forth. Uh, then you probably also have a bunch of rooms. Uh, these could be edit stages, suites, stages, even just uh, equipment lockers. Uh, and then speaking of equipment, we've also got an equipment module to track the entire inventory, the barcodes, the maintenance history, packages of equipment. So for example, a camera includes the case and the battery and the, maybe the tripod and the lens, uh, and also the rates that go along with them. And there's also, also things called uh, collections and pools to be able to manage groups of, of like-kind equipment. Uh, and then you may also serve, uh, provide services, uh, things that aren't physical resources, but uh, services that you provide, like editing or compositing or coloring or mixing. Uh, and all of those things have rates, uh, hourly rates, daily rates, weekly rates, flat rates, and so on. Uh, and then within the rate, we can track both what you're charging and what your expense is, which means we can also track your profit loss very quickly as you're putting a, a budget together. Together. And speaking of budgets, uh, we have the AICE and AICP budget templates built in. You can also build your own, uh, and you can also just create them on the fly as needed for any particular job uh, that comes in. Uh, hopefully, uh, you'll be making budgets or bids uh, that uh, turn into projects. Uh, within the project, that's where we keep track of all the resources, the budget versus the actual, the profit versus the loss on all of the line items that are getting used on it, uh, along with any uh, notifications that are necessary and uh, conflict detection uh, to prevent you from double booking any resources. Uh, all of those uh, resources are become available in the calendar in a bunch of different views, a day, week view, uh, month view, Gantt view, and so on. Uh, and our calendar has a two-way sync to Google Calendar and also to iCal, which is really nice, meaning that you can uh, make changes to events in Google Calendar or iCal and have them get reflected back into Studio Suite. And of course, the point of all of this is to create, be creating content. Uh, so there is a library module which tracks your physical and digital media assets, uh, also handles electronic delivery via FTP, uh, and recently added uh, Aspera and File Catalyst, uh, barcodes for check-in, check-out of all of that stuff, uh, and also uh, release history. Um, so if uh, media is coming in and out of the facility, it tracks all of those movements as well, which can be very important. Uh, and the other purpose of all of this, uh, hopefully, is to be making some money. Uh, so there's a very full invoice module uh, that has uh, tons of reporting, uh, exporting out to uh, QuickBooks and MYOB, uh, emailing of uh, invoices and all that stuff. So basically, the workflow uh, is this kind of data flow, which is also your workflow. It's a, it's a different kind of workflow from what a lot of people think of. Now, Studio Suite also integrates with a lot of other applications that you may be using. Uh, I mentioned Aspera and File Catalyst earlier, um, but also uh, Avid and Pro Tools and Final Cut and Logic and uh, MYOB and uh, QuickBooks and the whole uh, Creative Suite um, mobile devices, uh, address book, iCal, Google Calendar, uh, SMS, and so forth. So uh, Studio Suite can act, kind of act like the hub of uh, the, the process that you're going through in the, when you're making all of the content. Uh, and speaking of people that are making content, here are just a few of our users. Uh, and the key takeaway from this is, uh, aside from being kind of overwhelming, is the workflow of all of these people is uh, very different. Uh, so the way Sony and Microsoft do what they do is very different than Google and YouTube and Fox uh, and different than, say, National Geographic and NASA and the Food and Drug Administration. Um, one thing about creative uh, facilities is they all tend to do stuff slightly differently, uh, and that's where uh, Studio Suite's kind of secret sauce is in that we can kind of customize it, uh, or you can customize it to do exactly uh, what you need it to do. So uh, let's take a look. Um, here is Studio Suite. This is the main menu. Not all of your users are going to need all of these modules uh, that uh, come with Studio Suite. So on a per-user basis, uh, you can specify which groups of modules are going to be visible. Some of your users uh, in a multi-user environment uh, may have a main menu that looks more like this uh, instead of this. So we can also see some of these have little indicators. I can see that there are 17 tasks that are overdue, two projects overdue, 37 invoices that are overdue right from here. Uh, if anything were due today, we'd see a little blue number in the bottom right corner. 
So over here we've got daily notes that everybody can see and type into. Um, below that are my messages, my tasks, follow-ups or calls that I need to make. And down here are all of the events that are scheduled today. And an event is when any of those resources I talked about, whether that's a room or a person or a piece of equipment or a service, is scheduled today. Uh, we'll see it here. Uh, and the color is indicating status. Uh, so in my little setup here, green is confirmed, uh, yellow is on hold, uh, blue is bumpable, and you can see some of that in that little tooltip area, uh, or blue is also checked in. And as I hover over these, we not only see the details, but what other stuff is scheduled on those uh, same projects on the same day. And I can also see right from here that I've got a conflict. Uh, so I can see that Andy, uh, engineer, is double booked uh, on the Amazon 2 project. Uh, with, uh, he's booked twice on the same project. Uh, so a lot of information uh, brought to you right here uh, from the main menu. Next, I'm going to go into the setup area, and this is where you can define different companies uh, that you might uh, be posing as. Um, you know, if you've got multiple divisions, uh, maybe a film division, a photo division, a, a rental division, all of those can be defined in here. And then uh, each uh, contact or project or piece of equipment or invoice can be associated with any one of those internal companies. This is where you set up the different logos, and so there's a bunch of other user preferences. Uh, but I'm going to go quickly into user accounts uh, so we can see all of the different um, kind of roles that you can have. So if I create a new user account, um, I would put in um, my name and my password. Uh, and then here are the different what we call privilege sets uh, that control what different users are able to do, see and do within Studio Suite. So obviously, owner, man manager, administrators have high level access, um, you know, technicians, schedulers, producers, sales, lower level, editor, engineer, assistants, uh, vault kind of folks. Those are going to see kind of decreasing functionality and visibility as they log into Studio Suite. Um, that said, there's actually also uh, separate account permissions um, in overriding uh, the privilege sets. So for example, if I did want uh, this particular person here to be able to view the barcode module, I would simply click on it, uh, and now that uh, module has reappeared on their main menu. Maybe I want them to be able to view it, uh, but not delete or create or edit any records. So you can see it's very easy to kind of manage uh, what the permissions and privilege sets uh, for each of the different users of Studio Suite. I'm going to jump back into the main menu, um, and uh, let me get the right main menu. I've got to go to my user account here. I'm going to go to admin. From here, uh, I can see again all of the modules. I'm going to go into the contacts module, uh, and this is where you keep track of all of your companies and people, um, as well as their name, address, phone number, of course. Um, but what differentiates this from other contact management systems is that it's tied into the rest of Studio Suite. So we can see these different tabs across the top. Some of them are underlined, uh, indicating that there is content there. So if I click on the More Info tab for James Johnson, I can see that as a client, he's worked on two projects uh, called Good Colorization and DC Transfer. Uh, and as a participant, because he's a, he's a client, but he also works with us, um, or for us. Uh, and so as a participant, he's worked on these different projects here. So if I jump to this particular project, it's going to take me into the projects module where I'm going to be able to see and uh, all of the resources, the dates, the times, the rates, and so on uh, that are associated with that particular project. And I can actually just flip through all of the projects that are related to that particular person to see all the details of all those projects. And if he wants to duplicate one, uh, we do is hit the duplicate button. Uh, so now we're back in contacts, and uh, another neat little tab here is the web viewer, which is where we can see all kinds of interesting information about each of your contacts as you scroll through. Uh, so here is IMDB for this particular person. Uh, if I go to the next contact, ND Engineer, uh, and the next contact, Joe Producer, it's going to show me all of the information on various websites about those folks. Uh, we can also uh, see media assets that are related uh, to each client and uh, jump directly to them. So now I'm jumping into the library module to look at those two media assets for that particular client. Uh, and then I'm going to hit the back button to return to the contacts module. Uh, and then there is also the attach an FTP tab. And this is where we can basically attach any kind of document just by dragging it into the window. Uh, and that will either store a reference or a path to where that file is on my laptop. But that's not so great because if I close my laptop, nobody's got access to it on the network. Uh, so I'm going to store it remotely. Uh, and that's going to make a copy of it over on the Studio Suite server. Uh, and then from there, um, everybody will have access to it. 
Every module also has a reports tab, and this is where we can pick uh, the kinds of um, reports that you might expect to see for the module we're in. Uh, so here we're in contacts, so we've got things like mailing labels and you know, phone books and company lists and things like that. And whenever we print something out, we always have the option to uh, select which company uh, is going to be kind of posing uh, as the owner of that information. Uh, so I'm going to go over to the list tab, uh, do a quick find by client, uh, by vendor, by employee. This makes it easy to get to the folks you want, uh, but you could also search for it this way. So if I wanted to find, uh, I don't know, Sony, uh, oh, I don't have any in there. Uh, how about just big? So I know I have some big things, big player productions. Uh, those are all of the, the, the contacts that have the word big in it. So I am going to find all my employees and sort them by status. Uh, those That puts all of my people that are resources to the top of the list. And when I say resource, I mean my editors, engineers, cameramen, graphics, uh, gaffers, grips, uh, actors, talent, all that. Anybody that I need to schedule or book onto a project, uh, we want those to be resources. So in addition to people that are resources, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we also have rooms. So here is a list of my rooms. Uh, I could go into the detail of a particular one to see things like uh, dimensions and phone outlets and AC outlets. Um, and then uh, rooms might have rates as well, uh, hourly rates, daily rates, weekly rates, client specific. So if I go take a look at one of these, here I'm going to see for this one, which is Studio, uh, Studio A hourly, um, what the unit of measure is, which I can adjust, uh, and what the charge amount and the expense, a theoretical profit, uh, a profit margin. And I could also document a market rate, which is great for a lot of uh, corporate facilities that kind of have to justify their uh, existence. Uh, there's also rate cards to be able to handle, like, um, you know, if you do a certain kind of work, it's this, this kind of uh, rate card. Uh, and then there's also the external accounting details. Uh, so if you're uh, exporting things out to QuickBooks, uh, Studio A, when it's used at the Studio A hourly rate, is going to come into QuickBooks as uh, a service uh, in Studio A under the account number 1122337. Uh, rates is also where we would define overtime rates uh, and double time rates that are attached uh, to the link one, uh, to the uh, initial one. Uh, and there's also some other uh, kind of minor um, uh, preferences there. But just keep in mind that every resource, whether it's a room or a person or a piece of equipment or a service, can have multiple rates and also a default rate. Um, so I'm going to make Studio A hourly uh, be the uh, default rate for Studio A, and that's the one that's going to get used by default uh, every time we schedule it. So within rooms, uh, there is equipment, um, and if I go look at a particular piece of equipment, we can see all the details here, the serial numbers, the barcodes, the purchase dates, uh, what we paid for it, what it's worth, uh, that kind of thing, uh, as well as package information, so that whenever I use this camera, it's going to also book uh, these kind of child items that go along with it automatically. There's also a built-in depreciation schedule to track how much this uh, device is going to be worth uh, over time. And equipment can have rates as well, uh, hourly rates, daily rates, weekly rates, uh, also rental style rates. Uh, so if I go look at this particular one um, and I go to a day rate, it's going to show me the bill days per week or bill days per month. So a lot of rental houses will do like a three-day week or a 10-day month, uh, that kind of thing. So Studio Suite can handle those kinds of algorithms. Um, because equipment moves around a lot, sometimes it's good to be able to track the, uh, the, the usage of it. So this camera here, I can see all the different projects that it's been used on, the status of those, the total hours, assuming it ran for the entire time. Uh, the total revenue generated minus the cost is going to give us the earnings on each piece of equipment as we use it. So this, uh, this DigiBeta <laughs> video machine, we've only uh, earned $160, even though it cost us, <laughs> back in the day, uh, $20,000, and so we've actually lost money on that. So lots of kind of insight on the, that kind of thing. Um, equipment breaks, uh, so we've got a whole maintenance history to track the repairs and how much you're spending in terms of parts and labor to keep those things working. Uh, and then the web viewer, uh, this is kind of neat. This is going to show us uh, all kinds of information from the internet about uh, the different pieces of equipment that you've got. That makes it nice and easy. Uh, maybe even uh, if we go into eBay to find out what everybody else is buying and selling uh, each piece of equipment for. Uh, if you want to find another one to purchase or you just need parts or you want to sell the one that you've got. So we talked about uh, people that were resources. We talked about rooms that were resources, equipment that are resources. Um, there's other things, uh, services. So I'm going to go into my categories and items module, which is where we can define uh, things like the basic categories that you want to do summarization by, reporting by. Uh, and then within those categories, there are the different 
um, items. So if I come into services, for example, I've got things like catering and captioning and compositing and creative fees and editorial and football game uh, and uh, meals and uh, all that kind of stuff. And you can create those uh, as many of those as you need. I just hit the plus button. Uh, I'm going to call this one do a webinar. Uh, so the category is uh, services and the item is webinar. Uh, and then if I wanted to create a rate for it, uh, I would create a new rate here. Um, I'm going to call this a regular rate, and I'm going to do this, yeah, sure, by the hour. Let's call it, I don't know, $500 an hour, uh, and it costs us $50 an hour to do it. Um, and so now I've got a new service uh, called Webinar, and uh, it's got a rate, and I'm done. So I can, I can now book that onto a project. So um, we can start, we can create a project uh, from two different places. One is in the projects module, and that's good if uh, you're, you need to start documenting something about a, a future project, but you don't really know when it's going to occur. Um, and we can also create those from the calendar, uh, which is where I'm going to start. Uh, so I'm going to go into my calendar uh, module here, which uh, opens up in a separate window, which is nice because you can have it uh, on two monitors, that kind of thing. And um, some quick details about the calendar. So I've got resources along the left side here, or down the left side, and time across the top. I could zoom into a particular day, um, and uh, I could go out to a week if I wanted to, or a month. Um, let's go back into the week view. So the list of resources that are being shown uh, is governed by preset. Uh, so maybe I want to look at uh, just my cameras. So there's are, there's are my cameras for the week. Uh, maybe I want to look at all of my equipment. Uh, so here's all of my equipment. Maybe I want to look at a day crew or a night crew uh, or a uh, second floor or third floor. So you can make, make as many presets as you want. Um, and that's great for people that have a lot of resources that they need to manage. Uh, so what's neat about this, though, is um, in addition to showing just resources, we've got uh, you know daily notes up here at the top. Uh, but as I scroll down, uh, it's also going to show me the projects that I've got going on uh, this week. Um, and we can kind of adjust these, too. So if that this uh, project <laughs> called SFSF uh, is going to last a little bit longer, I can just drag that out. Uh, and I have this other show uh, called My Big Show Equipment Usage that's showing me that uh, that la is lasting four days, uh, even though we, don't, may, we may not necessarily have uh, resources scheduled within it yet. So below that uh, are all of the employee schedules, uh, and I don't have anybody scheduled here. We'd see them in little bubbles if they were, um, and we would also see tasks uh, down there as well. So let's uh, let's book something. I'm going to go to Friday, thank God, uh, and let's book uh, Studio A starting at nine o'clock, and let's make that go till about three thirty, uh, and then I also need Andy Engineer to come in a little bit early. Um, and stay a little bit later, and then I'm going to need a camera kind of in the middle to do a shoot on a couple things, uh, and then um, I want to have uh, this other camera available just in case um, as a second camera. Um, so I've selected a number of different resources here uh, across different times, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and book those as a project by hitting the Book Project button. Uh, I can either add that to an existing project if it's underway or create a new one, which is what I'm going to do. And here's a pop-up list of all of our clients, and uh, I'm going to type our big guy again, uh, James Johnson. Uh, and the uh, name of the project will be the old uh, webinar. And only the blue fields are required at this point. Um, but in, uh, at the top, I can choose which of my companies, my internal companies, is going to kind of own this project. Um, and uh, I could also maybe justify who the producer is going to be. Uh, if I want to have uh, some external people, maybe there's going to be a, uh, a writer. Uh, so here's my writers. These people are coming from the contacts module based on the title. Um, so it's kind of doing some nice filtering for us uh, on that. Um, I want to add some notes here, uh, kind of blah, 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 do this really well, do it better than last time, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and I can either create this as a budget or a bid or quote, uh, whatever you call it, uh, or as an actual, uh, if this is uh, happening in kind of real time. Since we started this from the calendar, I'm going to call it an actual. I'm just going to hit the next button. Oh, I forgot to mention up at the top, the client, uh, as soon as I pick them, they're aging, uh, shows up right here. So I have the opportunity as I'm on the phone with them to talk about, hey, you owe us 14 grand, uh, and then you're actually really overdue uh, on it. 120 days. Let's do that. Oh, here's PO number, blah, 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 blah. Um, and uh, maybe I want to change the terms on this to COD since he's so far behind. So I'll hit next, 
And uh, this is going to uh, check for conflicts on the items that I uh, set up and put them into kind of like a list view. So here's Studio A and the engineer, the camera, and the other camera. Pops them all in there along with their default rates. So right away I know this is going to cost us, uh, we're going to charge $850 for this. Uh, now because I defined the expenses uh, for these items, it's also tracking our total expense in the expense view here, which means right away, boom, I know our profit loss. It's, uh, we're charging $850, it's costing $161, uh, we're uh, profiting uh, $689 or 81% uh, margin. That's good to know. Um, and now, so we just talked to the client and they said, oh, we need to do a voiceover, forgot to tell you. Uh, okay, so I can add uh, some resources here a couple different ways. Uh, first one is I'm going to click Add Items, and um, I can go filter this by equipment. Uh, but I could also just uh, type what I'm looking for, M-I-C-R-O. Um, so here's all of my uh, microphones. I'll just grab number seven there. But uh, I want to come back to this equipment list one more time and show you a couple things. So these items that have a little red exclamation mark, that means they're already booked uh, on different projects during that day. And if I try to book them again, it's going to switch to an X to show us that now, that now you've got a real conflict. Um, so I'm going to unselect that. Um, now, because I booked the VO, uh, I also need somebody to do that. Um, so uh, here's all my people. I need an engineer, so I'm going out of here, uh, let's get uh, Andy Engineer, that's going to create a conflict, I'm going to book it just so you can see how that works, uh, and then I need a room, so I'm going to go to rooms, I'll book uh, edit 2 for this, so I'm going to go ahead and add these items to the project, oh, and actually while I'm here, I could have hovered over uh, Studio A or whatever to um, uh, see the con conflict with our our project, so it, there's it's telling me about, about this conflict, um, and uh, see, I, I'm conflicting with Andy Engineer, uh, with, which is uh, with myself, actually. And as I hover over that, it's showing me the project that I'm conflicting with. In this case, uh, uh, by bad design, I'm conflicting with myself. So I'm just going to delete one of these guys. Actually, you know what? I'm going to cancel that. And I'm going to show you another trick, which is to uh, reassign. I'm going to change Andy Engineer to somebody else. I need some other engineers. Let's pick uh, Byron is Awesome. And uh, it's going to do a conflict for check for that, and turns out that that has resolved automatically both of those uh, conflicts. Um, so we can do a couple of other things. We can add people this way. So if I wanted to add, uh, I don't know, a lens kit, here it comes. Uh, it's going to get added right there. Uh, and maybe I wanted to add some meals. So M-E-A-L. This is another way that we can add things. I'm going to go catering, so I've just added that uh, to the project as well. So that's how you can build a project. Um, there's also tasks. Um, tasks are things that don't necessarily have, um, you know, a physical resource or a, or, or a charge to them. Uh, so I'm going to add a task, something very difficult like that, uh, and I can set up a due date. This needs to be done by Friday, uh, and I can assign this to one or more people. Uh, just by picking them this way. Uh, I can also assign it to a whole role. So if I want all of my um, assistants to do this, boom, I've just sent them all the task. And I can also notify them as well. So if I hit the notifications button, it's going to open up my notifications window, and I can send this notification out right now. Uh, I also want to send it a day before it's due and also maybe one hour before it's due. Uh, and from here, I can choose the people that are going to receive it, either by SMS or via email. Um, maybe different people want to receive it different ways. So uh, text notifications. And, you know, you might be using tasks a lot, and you might find that you're creating the same kind of repetitive task structures over and over again. So we've set up what we call default tasks uh, or task groups. I've got one here called edit session. I'm going to load that whole uh, edit session in one kind of plop. Uh, all in there. And so, you know, get the files, load them, add them, assemble a rough edit, and then as we uh, kind of get these things done, we can uh, adjust different statuses here to say, yeah, this one's done, uh, this one is in progress. Uh, and that way, everybody knows the status of all of these projects. When I assign these tasks to people, it shows up on their main menu uh, within this project, of course, in the tasks module. Also shows up on their phone in the web glancer uh, mobile so they can see that stuff. Um, okay, let's move on. Um, let's um, go to the uh, Media Assets tab. Uh, we're creating content here. So I'm going to click the plus button. And uh, let's say a client walked in the door with two hard drives. I'm going to call this uh, HD1. And notice it's inherited all of the client and project information. It's also set up a library number and a barcode if we need it. Uh, I'm going to hit Done. 
and uh, it's asking me for the name of the second one. I'm going to call it HD2. Uh, and now we are in the library module looking at these two um, media assets. So uh, if this were an older media, a tape, a CD, something like that, um, we put in the different titles, cuts, cues, clips, scenes, spots, segments, whatever you call them. Uh, but chances are you're probably working more with like a digital uh, asset, uh, with digital workflow. So I'm going to go to my disk log here, and I'm going to click the log a directory button. It's going to ask me what kind of metadata I want to capture. I'm going to choose a couple of these boxes here. Uh, and then it's going to ask me to locate a folder, or I could do a whole hard drive if I wanted to, but for this I'm just going to do this folder, choose, and it's going to go take a snapshot of all of the file folder structure on there. I can collapse this if I want to, uh, or I can open it up, and if I want to get right to work on the particular video, uh, I just double click on it, uh, and it's going to open it up for me in whatever the native application is. Um, and so this is storing a path to where the file is, uh, which means that I need to have access to it through the operating system or through the network. Um, if I don't have access to it, or if the file is moved, uh, it's gone. Um, so uh, we can do multiple logs. So if I started, if I worked on these files all day, and then I wanted to do a log again, I would just hit log a directory again, and it's going to ask us if I want to either cancel or re replace the one I've got, or add to an existing one. Maybe we want to do a before and after of, uh, of the different logs. Um, so we can also check these media assets in and out uh, of the facility if we need to, uh, and then we can also um, look at the history if we do check it in and out. You know, when when was it sent out? When is it coming back? Um, and then there's also this attach an FTP tab uh, that I showed you before, but this is where we can basically drag folders uh, into the uh, window, and this is basically going to store a path to where that folder is. Uh, and if I click on it, it's going to open it up. And again, I would need to have uh, access to that folder uh, through the operating system, through the network, uh, but if I do, it opens it up. Uh, and I can also uh, drag files uh, in here. Uh, and in this case, um, I have the option to either store it as a reference or path to where it is, uh, or uh, if I store it remotely, it's actually going to copy that file over to the server. And now, even if I do close up my laptop, uh, everybody's got access to that file. And if I hover over it, it's going to show us all the metadata relative to that file. Um, we've also got some options for delivery. Um, there's an integrated FTP uh, client to deliver these assets this way, uh, as well as the Aspera and File Catalyst, uh, and uh, as, as different ways to deliver those things. Oh, let me go to reports and uh, show you the labeling. Uh, so, you know, people aren't doing labels much anymore, but if you do have to uh, create a CD or DVD label for somebody, uh, there it is. Uh, and those are all user customizable, as is the rest of Studio Suite. So let's jump back into the project, and uh, from here, um, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and select all for invoice, and that just went down and checked all of these checkboxes right here, um, because I want to add them all to my invoice. A um, couple other notes is... Um, this uh, Studio A is normally 100 bucks, but you know what, uh, for you, let's make it 150 And any changes that I make to the time or quantity um, that are you know, kind of off the card rate are going to show up in blue so that we can see that we've altered that. So I'm going to only charge you five hours uh, for this particular thing. So now let's um, go ahead and select, uh, invoice the selected items. This is going to basically make a clone of all of that information and drop it off over in the invoicing module. From here, we can print it out. Boom, there is our invoice. We, we don't need to do all the math again. It's, it's already there for us, which is kind of nice. Uh, and then from here, we can export it out to QuickBooks or MYOB um, and, uh, and also send it via email if we like. So um, that's kind of the, the 360 tour of Studio Suite. Uh, as we can see, it's all running in FileMaker, which is uh, what allows it to be customizable. Uh, it also provides a couple other options. So I'm going to hide FileMaker right now, and I'm going to go into uh, Chrome. Uh, so here is what we've got, uh, what we call our web glancer. Uh, and so this is going to allow us to get into kind of a read-only view of things like contacts um, from a browser, from anywhere. Now, I, I had signed into all this already, so um, there is a secure sign-in to get into this. Uh, we also provide from here uh, a read-only view into the calendar, uh, which is great. So there's a, just a flat rate charge uh, for this Web Glancer product uh, as an add-on to the Studio Suite Network version, uh, and that's basically going to give your whole crew uh, a read-only access to the calendar so everybody can see uh, what's going on from home or their phones or wherever they need to see it. Um, 
So in addition to the read-only access that we have in what we call our web glancer, there's also web direct. Uh, and so I'm going to log back in here. I had logged in before, but it unlogged itself on a timeout. So this will take just a second. Um, but once we get in, we're going to be able to see the project that we created. Uh, and we're going to be able to make changes to it through the browser. Um, so here we are coming into our project. And while that's opening up, I'm actually going to get the FileMaker version also up back up on screen so we can see how this works. So uh, on the right side, I've got my uh, Studio Suite of, in FileMaker. On the left side, I've got it in a browser. So I'm going to just change the status of um, that Studio A event on the first. Uh, and notice that automatically in the background, I didn't have to refresh. Uh, it has changed in the browser as well, pretty much instantly. Um, so from the browser, I'm going to change that Studio A time. Let me get this uh, so where we can see it happen. Uh, so I'm going to change the start time from 3.30 to 6 o'clock from the browser. And as soon as I click out, we'll see it has changed down here as well. So it's a real you know, two-way connection. Uh, we're still calling the browser access um, you know, not a primary method of using Studio Suite. You're going to get the most robust experiences through FileMaker Pro as a client. But if you're at home or on the road and you need to make changes or adjust things, you're going to be able to do it. Um, so I'm going to go back to the main menu and show you one final thing before. Uh, which is the access uh, through uh, an iPad. So this is my real-life iPad. I'm picking it up now, and I'm going to go into our projects module. Um, and I'll also mention that the, the iPad usage is uh, really intended for inside the facility. Um, you could do it from home as long as you've got a really nice um, uh, Wi-Fi connection in your house. But basically, we're going to want to be able to um, walk around the studio, the facility, to be able to look and see what's going on. So here's the, the, the Moviola webinar that we just created a bit ago, and uh, we can definitely make changes here. So I'm going to change the uh, Edit 2 on the 12th. Uh, I'm going to change that to Bumpable uh, from the iPad. And uh, as that's thinking about it, I'm going to come back into FileMaker Pro, um, get back into that project. We're going to see that. Oh, I'm in the wrong project. No wonder. Let me come back into... Oh. Here, I'll show the other search, uh, M-O-V-I-O-L-A. So that's going to get us right to our project. And look, Edit 2 is bumpable. So that's kind of the speed version of uh, the demo. Um, there's a lot more to it than that. Um, if you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, and there's a, a downloadable trial version at studiosuite.com and a bunch of videos up on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.